Step five is to identify the primary keys for each table. And step six is to add the foreign keys for each table. So the really nice part about this is these are already specified in on the diagram. So we've already made this decision. And if we go look at the starting diagram, we can see what those primary keys are. So for the user table, the primary key is user ID. So in this column, we're going to put cap PK for that primary key. In the phone number, it is both the values, right? This one takes a combination of columns to make the primary key. So a pri primary key in phone number and in user ID. In the registration table, it takes two columns again to make the primary key, and that's the user ID and section number. In the section, the primary key is the section number. So we just put a primary key there. If we look at the course and identify the course is the course ID is the primary key and prerequisite and that both of them. So it takes the combination to make the primary key. So the combination of both of those columns. So we'll put primary key there. And then we'll go through and do the same thing for step six is we'll refer to our diagram and in user, there's no foreign keys in phone number user ID is a foreign is a foreign key so we'll put FK there in registration user ID is a foreign key and section number is a foreign key so we'll put FK in both of those in section notice that instructor ID and course ID are both foreign keys so we'll put cap FK in both of those uh, and we'll look in course there's no foreign keys in the course table. So prerequisite table, course ID and prerequisite course ID are both foreign keys. So we'll put foreign key FK down here for both of those. And there we've gone through and added into the details the primary keys and the foreign keys. And these directly come from the diagram from our logical database diagram.